Peak might be the best multiplayer casual game of 2025, but what if there was a game just like it but in 2D pixel art style? Hello, my name is Ed and I'm working on a casual co-op multiplayer online game set in a 2D pixel art world. In this devlog, I'll show you what I've worked on and what I'm currently planning for my game titled Jump Quest. The aim of the game is to platform your way up to the top of the tower with the help of friends and items you find along the way. The tower itself, however, will dynamically change each attempt using procedural generation just like Peak. Now that we understand the game loop, let me talk technical for a little bit and tell you about how I'm building this. So you might be asking, what game engine am I using? Unity, Game Maker, Godot? What if I told you it's JavaScript? Or technically, TypeScript? Along with the really fun and intuitive game library Kaplay.js. And finally, Kalesius for the multiplayer framework, which handles all the multiplayer server state for the game. So you might be thinking, why choose JavaScript to build your game? And the number one reason why is because it allows you to play the game directly from any device that has access to a browser. Just go to a website and start playing straight away. No downloads, no executables. Just share a link with your friends and hop in together. That means Windows, Mac, Linux, and even mobile compatibility available straight out of the box. That being said, for everyone that's not a fan of browser games, it will be available on Steam and you will be able to play it as its own standalone executable. All right, enough technical chat. Now let's take a peek at some of the work that I've done. Before even starting on the game, first I created a Figma board where I can dump inspiration, photos, images, sprite work. From here I can start to build a visual identity of my game. I also made this rough mind map that shows systems and features in my game that all sort of connect together. This process really helped me define the scope of my game. From here I started the project by cloning a Play Calesius template. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that. After setting up the template, you can see we have the foundations for a multiplayer game. It's pretty simple right now, you can just click around, but you can see there's two tabs open and two people are playing. But my game is a platformer, so we'll need to add some gravity and a floor for the player to stand on. And look, we've got our little guys running around and they're having a good time, but maybe we should make them a little test level. There we go, our little guy is happy now. But our little guy might need a name and a way to chat to people. And our little guy might want to be a little wizard or a little cat. So I created this little temporary start screen that allows you to choose a hero and a player name. I also created this in-game chat system so our little guy can speak to his friends. Next, I added some movement mechanics for our little guy. We've got climbing, crawling, and ledge grabbing. But probably my favorite feature so far has got to be adding emotes. Just look how cute they are. Little guy can express his emotions now. Okay, so what's next? Well, every good multiplayer co-op game should have proximity voice chat. I won't bore you with the implementation details, but just know I used Agora, which is a third-party platform that helps you easily integrate real-time communication chat lobbies. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the end result. I said, guys, my name's Sir Mixalot. Welcome to Jackass. Geronimo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that worked perfectly. Now it's time to work on some gameplay. Well, every good platformer needs traps and obstacles, so I got to work creating these. Okay, so first up we've got the simple spike. Next up we've got a jumpy spring. Moving on, we've got a falling platform. Next up we've got a spike that triggers when you walk over it. Then we've got this lever item, so this one's pretty cool. I've programmed it so it's quite modular, so in this case we can open this door, but you can attach it to basically anything. Imagine you trigger this lever and a boulder spawns right above your friend's head. Okay, next we got the bear trap. And these next two are probably my favorite. So we got the pendulum axe swing. And then we've got the big swinging spike ball. Look at me play hopscotch on this thing. And lastly, we've got the moving platform. Now every platformer needs a moving platform in their game. So this platform might actually be a good segue to the next topic, which is actually networking. So I might get a little technical here. If you're not interested in it, feel free to skip to the next chapter. But before I talk about networking, if you have any traps or obstacles in mind, feel free to share them with me. And who knows, they might make the game. 
So what do platforms have to do with networking? Well, let me show you this clip that visually demonstrates the problem that I'm trying to tackle. Here you can see each player on their screen are riding the platform. However, the remote player is floating around, almost as though they're desynchronized. And that's the problem, synchronization. You see, Clesius, the server framework, just sends and receives state from all players in the lobby. So that might be player coordinates, player name, whatever it might be. But it's not actually running an emulation of the game. So when player one enters the game and the platform is all the way over to the left, player two might enter later on and the platform might be in a completely different position. So here's our problem. If the server doesn't know where the platform is, whose responsibility is it to keep track of the platform? Is it the first player that joined? Is it the player that has the best ping? This is our problem. And it's not just platforms. Imagine we have a bunch of enemies running around on the screen. Whose responsibility is it to keep track of their state? I actually spoke to Endel, the creator of Calesia's framework, and he provided me a proposed global tick solution, which I'm looking to implement later down the track. So big shout out to Endel, thanks for your help. Also, if you have any experience with the Calesius framework and you think you might have a solution for this, let me know. All right, that's enough technical jargon. Now back to showcasing features. So during your time playing Jump Quest, climbing up the tower, you're most likely to come across some equipment. And this equipment can increase your stats like speed and jump height, but most importantly, it allows you to show off your fashion sense. And let's be real, that's the most important part of this social game. So let me show you an example of how I've implemented equipment. Here we've got little guy and we've got big guy. So big guy is gonna equip the items first, drop them, and then little guy is gonna pick them up. You see him picking them up. You can see they're in my inventory here. Don't worry about the crappy design, the UI and the tooltips are just placeholder for the moment. All players equipment are also synced to the server as well. Okay, last thing I want to show you real quick is controller support. So this was implemented really easily with Kaplay. It was basically a couple of lines of code and then it was ready to go. And that just about wraps up everything I've worked on so far for Jump Quest. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And if you have any feedback or questions or want to talk to me about the game, feel free to leave a comment. I've also created a Discord where we can chat and hang out and talk about the game, feedback, or any features you'd like to see. So the link for that will be in the description. As a sneak preview for the next devlog, I'll show you how I'm implementing procedurally generated levels. Here you can see a little visualizer of a level generated, but I won't give away too much right now. All right, that's it. Bye-bye now.